Hey YouTube, what goes on? And welcome to Disabout Action Figures, bringing you another awesome episode of The X-Files. Very excited to be back. We're getting in the flow here. It's like every other week. It's not every week like I promised originally. Uh, but again, really enjoy doing this, talking to everybody about X-Men the Animated Series, coming out of SDCC recently, all the news, X-Men 97. One of the main reasons we're having this rewatch show is to go back, watch this great animated series as we get excited and pumped up for that inevitable release of X-Men 97. Bo gave us a lot of background information at SDCC. They showed some footage. We got some more stills out of it. We got some plot points that I won't spoil here, but all sorts of great stuff coming up in X-Men 97. So of course we're gonna go back and watch the original series, right? Uh, one of my favorite things to do with, with this series and doing this, this part of the channel is talking to the awesome guests. This week is not gonna be a letdown. I've been talking to this dude since pre-pandemic. Uh, guy's awesome, has his own show. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, killing it on Instagram, killing it with everything this guy does. Let's bring him in. Here he is, Prime to the first. What's going on, sir? So happy to have you here, man. What's up, people? What's up, everybody? It's good to be back, you know, back in front of the camera, back and just be able to talk to fellow collectors. So thank you for uh, having me on. Hey, man, it's my pleasure. Again, I've enjoyed corresponding with you online for, we were just saying, I don't know how long it is now because of, you know, time's relevant yep. <laughs> at this point. But, uh, but it's cool to get a chance to actually sit down and, and have a, a talk with you here on camera. Um, yeah. You're coming to us from the West Coast, right? Yes. So a little bit earlier out there. So I appreciate you taking the time and setting it aside to come on tonight. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because we try to remember, you know, when we first connect. And a lot of times we have to reference figs or waves. It's like, oh, it was around the Juggernaut wave or, you know, because I, I know we, we both of us are Marvel Legend collectors. So yep. I think a lot of times it's certain waves that oh it was this post or that post or i, I first like this one thing it's funny because i think some of the arcades that you first had uh purchased for me and seeing those i'm like oh that was way back when like now i know where in time we first uh connected so that was a long time ago yeah man i gotta go on my instagram and see the first picture i posted with this that's what i'll know when i bought it probably <laughs> everybody watching everybody knows who prime is but if you don't yeah. if you're new to the channel this is one of his uh, earlier arcade cabinets. I love this thing. It sits in my living room, actually, next to my DVD collection. Uh, so it's always on display. So I really enjoy this thing. So again, you're killing it as always, sir. Hey, even your uh, significant other reached out to me for uh, whether it was a Christmas gift or it was some type of gift. That I had. So uh, that, that's also that's also really cool within the community, you know? Yep, I, I completely yeah. agree. I think that I'm looking at it now. It's, it's on like my review stance. I'm not going to get it off of there and knock things over. Uh, but it's the Nick Fury Punisher. Arcade. Oh, yes. The Nick Fury one. That's right. That's yep. right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's a that's, good one. And, and as soon as I got it, I was kicking myself for not buying the uh, the arcade cabinet. The What do you call it? The, 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 the big the cabinet. They sell. The one-ups. Yeah, the one-up. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I actually got the X-Men one for my 40th birthday. But um, yeah. Oh, nice. Now I look at that little one and I'm like, dang, I should have got that big ass version, <laughs> you know? It, it came with the Marvel Super Heroes one. Because I that my wife gave me that for Christmas. And it has mm -hmm. the Nick Fury and Punisher one. Hey, what's oh, up, Chad Kinsler? Chad Kinsler's in the house. Yeah, I'll tell you yeah. what. Say hello to the chat before we get into things here. Uh, four feathers in the house. Let's go to Four Feathers. Uh, happy belated birthday to your daughter, Four Feathers. That's awesome. Uh, how old does she turn, buddy? Um, listen on the chat. Uh, Chad, as you said, Chad's in the house. Go on, Chad. Chad, Chad is here. Uh, Greg is in the house. Never misses. How you doing, Greg? What's up, Greg? Happy, happy X-Men 97 day. Um and I think that's everybody for now that we got to. Oh, there we go. Spe speak of the devil, he shall appear. Figure fan Nate's in the house. You know this hey guy. Yo. He looks familiar. My better yeah. half. I, <laughs> my, yeah, the yin to my yang. <laughs> I think I've seen him do some episodes of shows with you in the past, right? Yeah. You know, and we took a break from the figure booth just because we always preach it. We, we all always really... Uh, try to be advocates of like, hey, don't just stay consistent on the grind where if you feel like you, you're you keeping up with everyone or if you're in the rat race, then it's okay to, you know, just step back and, and reflect. So a lot of it was just our day jobs. A lot of it was just life in general and summer break. I got little ones. Um, so we had to take a break. But um, with that being said, we're already looking on coming back. So for those of you that do or have checked out the figure booth make sure you stay tuned because uh hopefully we'll, we'll be coming back we will coming back uh in september 
very excited for that. And I have to say, I'm not just trying to kiss your butt here. Uh, some of the episodes you got, well, they're all great episodes, first of all. Yeah. But you guys have done some really thought-inspiring episodes, like things about, you know, why we collect, you know, right. uh, uh, where we, uh, 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 space, uh, space issues in the collection. Like yep. some of the topics you guys hit on, like I literally think about those episodes for days. I'm like, they really made me think after listening to this. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the feedback we get, it, it all, for the most part, all of it is good. But it's funny, we get some some of the comments are like hey that was a great episode but i ended up canceling you know x amount of pre-orders but you guys saved me but i kind of hate you <laughs> but you know so it's a lot of like it, it's it's a lot of good feedback and i see mario in the chat yep. uh mario don't you have a show to do get out of here um <laughs> and it's a lot of fun because we do we we try to tackle these topics where i think a lot of collectors feel like am i the only one going through this you know dealing with space or figuring out our why like why is it that we collect you know why do we want to have every single little thing from every single line, which sometimes a lot of times you take a stand back and you look at it and you're like, why, why did I, why did I get so hard into this line? And then we end up selling it for dirt cheap. I mean, Mario's a perfect example of that. <laughs> yeah, man. And again, <laughs> along those lines, uh, one expression I've really adopted to my channel has been staying in my lane. And I think listening oh, yes. to a lot of your episodes, yeah. like that's yeah. been my thing in 2023, stay in my lane. Like yeah. here's something new and shiny. I don't really collect it. I probably don't need it. Stay in my lane. <laughs> yeah. And that's really hard. Uh, Nate's a real good advocate of staying in, in his lane or at least trying to preach that. But that's really hard because there's so much good stuff. And I think right now it is the golden age for a collector. There's so much good stuff out there. It's really hard. And kudos to those that just stay dedicated to that one single line like for example just marvel legends it's really hard just to stay with one just comic figures versus mcu figures or trying to be a completist and uh marvel legends it's really hard um let alone when you got you know dc dc multiverse all, all these many you know different lines and brands it's definitely hard to stay in one lane um and that's why we sometimes go back to similar topics and we um revisit them because we fall into these pitfalls and the cycle keeps coming back where you try to stay in your lane and then you end up going hardcore on like mythic legions or mezco or or you know uh, uh imports Tre any, so anytime, it's, I have it's anytime i talk to trevor it's mythic legions and i talk to trevor or i go to like zolocon or retrocon yeah. and right away it's oh my goodness i gotta buy legions uh great great example here <laughs> he goes uh <laughs> this about says stay in your lane but then he walks into an ollie's and buys everything in caves <laughs> yep yeah see we don't have all these over here on the west coast so i'm guessing we either it's either like a ross or, mm. or like a five below bit legends finding like when i see your videos i'm like damn it i need it we need to get an all these out here in the west coast dude they, they have been gold and i actually feel bad like obviously i'm checking their like weekly now because this stuff keeps coming yeah. out and i feel bad because people like almost get frustrated they're like it's not fair <laughs> and it I'm is like, not fair i'm gonna start a uh protest or like a sign a petition to stop your videos from <laughs> Being up well, for all these. No. <laughs> you, if, you get, if you get 500 signatures, they'll put a picture yeah. of my face on the door and yeah. let me in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Uh, bigger fan Nate says uh, that Trevor's is a Legion's enabler. Oh, yeah, he is, man. Yep. He definitely is. He knows exactly what to say. And we always joke on the affinity equation because, like, if we even mention his name, yeah. he just appears out of nowhere. And it's like, hey, guys, buy Mythics. Yeah. He's so good. Oh. Yeah, I was just talking to him earlier and I gave him a bunch of crap. So I, he was like, I miss you guys. I'm like, well, I miss talking smack to you. So, <laughs> and that's another Stay great touch. show. Obviously, uh, Legion <laughs> Lounge every week. We were just saying there's yeah. so much great content out there to watch, whether you watch it live or you're watching it on the playback. It's, it's, it's an exciting time to be a collector to sum it up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Very much so. So, I'll tell you what, man, let's get into the episode. Um, again, uh, we are talking about episode nine this week, uh, which is going to be. Uh, the Cure episode. No, not the not the, the the dreary rock band that I still listen to sometimes. Not that Cure. <laughs> not those guys. Not the guys from the, the Crow movie. Okay. Um, we're talking about the Cure as any cure for being a mutant. So I don't know about you, Prime, but when I watched this uh, on the second playback, mm -hmm. I definitely had feels back to that third X-Men movie that wasn't so good. <laughs> right. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. It did remind me of that. Yeah, I made a lot of connections there. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. I, I tried to forget about it. And then I was like, oh, man, like, they really took a lot of stuff out of this episode, even to the point where in certain parts of the cartoon, which we'll talk about, I feel like the actors might have seen this episode and it, when, they, when they made that movie and made it a point to say things certain yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah for no, sure. for sure. I, man, that's that's crazy that you just said that because just the scene. Yeah, there's a couple of scenes where I'm like, oh, you know what? That is right. It did remind me of that horrible movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what? I, I, Kelsey Grammer was good. I appreciated him. I, I, he didn't mail it in or anything. After that, <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of was done at that point. Uh, Lucas, what's up? Lucas just jumped in. How you doing, Luke? What's up, man? How you doing, sir? <laughs> Uh, oh, there it is, Nate. Nate on cue on the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> yeah, um, that was actually in the the title card for uh, the last episode I did with uh, Yojo Jerk. <laughs> I had to put that in there. All right. So again, we encourage participation, folks. If you're watching here live, or if you are watching this on the playback, feel free to put something down in the comments that you might like about this episode, your favorite quote, your favorite moment, your favorite character. We'll go through all those things at the end of the episode. Uh, we like. Uh, people be in here. It's like the Oprah book club. Everybody gets a book. Everybody gets a chance to talk. So, uh, mm-hmm. all right. So getting into it, uh, Josh, as we say every week previously on X-Men. On the X-Men. So last week, as we said, we had Juggy, a lot of juggernaut action going on. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and we get a lot of callbacks. Obviously the really great thing with this series, Josh, is that we have, all, it's literally like watching a comic book in that Every episode is going to play off of a, a, a previous episode in some to some capacity. Yeah. Yep. So here we open up, and who do we got strutting on the screen right away here, Prime? We got good old Cable, good old uh, Josh yes. Brolin. He's just rolling in, <laughs> thinking, "Am I Thanos or am I Cable? Which one am I?" Yeah. Um, and and we get the little chateau going on here, and uh, of course, fans of the comics at the time would have known who this was. Uh, but yeah. if you're a little kid watching this for the first time, he's probably just some dude. But he's not some dude. Who is he? <laughs> he is uh, what's what uh, Warrington Angel. Yep. I don't know his. Yeah, War- Warren Warrington the oh, third. Warren Warrington, all yeah. W's. I think he's the third. Uh, one thing I really enjoy about doing these uh, Prime is that I literally go through like frame by frame and take my screenshots. Um, and there's just some really cool images. Like for instance, here kicking it off right away you get his eyes looking at the fire which i thought was really neat yeah that's cool when he's like when she's asking him about adler and he's like staring deeply into the fire yes like you can tell he's he's very much a tortured soul which we're going to learn as it kind of goes on and works its way through a lot of foreshadowing that goes on in the episodes oh yeah they're so good at it and you you always get some (laughs) sort of payoff right yeah Uh, new york city figure fanatic what's going on man what's up What's up? What's up? So we used to get this little little date night going on here, and there's definitely some angst. We got the whole classic, you don't want to get to know the real me. Yeah. And she's literally throwing herself at him. Yeah. Well, he's like, she's like, I mean, come on, you got the scene right. You guys are in the cabin, up in the snow, very romantic. Mm-hmm. You got the fire lit, you got the bear rug. Everything you guys are in your like, you know, your typical spread for a JC Penny catalog. Like, come on, how are you not gonna get hot and heavy? Right. They're, they're they're like seconds away from this being like an R-rated cartoon, right? Cable shows up to like make it a party and he doesn't want any of that. Yeah. And I, oh, I love the fight. I love the fight we get here. Like, yeah, he looks so terrified, like at the beginning, like yeah. at this point, if you didn't know better, you would think he's just a regular guy and like he's about to get beat up. And then out of flipping nowhere, man just pulls a laser gun out of his pants and starts shooting a dang thing. I mean, look at that. And, and it's funny that he shoots the hand still there. Yeah. And he still misses. I don't know. This whole scene was cracking up because then he pushes the bookshelf over. Like yeah, there's nobody. Yeah. Like he disappeared. Yeah, like uh, Cable. Uh, I guess he does have like the the teleportation thing in the comic and right. the movie. But I think he's just you know outsmarting people at this point in the show. Yep. It'd be perfect. And then the, he gives them like this, like this. He tells them like, hey, next time you shoot, you better make sure you uh, you hit the person or you hit, you hit the target. Uh we're, we'll be picking our favorite quotes later. Cable had so many good ones in this episode. It's gonna be tough. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. So he gets blasted. It, uh, that's, the, that's the funny part because Cable tells him like, "Hey, you when you shoot, you got to make sure you hit you hit the target." And he's like, "Yeah, I remember that." And he turns around, he shoots, and he misses again. So I'm he like, does. "Dude, what a dummy!" I think it's right here. He says, to yeah. him, you, "You have a bad memory." Yeah, <laughs> you got a bad memory. I just I just told yeah. you, hit me next time when you try to shoot. Yeah, it's, it's freaking. And great. I don't even think he moved. He just stood there. And Warren Worthy like, "Hey, what's up, Star Marvel?" There what's you go. On? Thanks for being here. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Nate also added in and said that Cable was <laughs> always so mad. <laughs> he, he, he was. Yeah, I wouldn't try to give Cable a hug, man. He's definitely more of like a handshake kind of guy. Definitely not the ladies' man either. No, he is not. So we do get the full reveal here. For anybody that didn't yeah. notice, uh, Angel pops out those wings, and it's on like Donkey Kong because they're about to have a little bit of fight here, a little spat inside. I love the st- the. But just the sound he makes when the wings—I don't know whether he was popping out his wings or he was like 
dropping the kids off at the pool because he was just screaming. Like <laughs> I know. Right? And he hid the wings really good underneath that puffy jacket. So when the wings popped out, I was like, holy moly. Yeah, it's definitely it's not, like Gar- it's not like Gargoyles where they're wrapping them around. No, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're in there. Uh, just tying it back to the film, uh, uh, X-Men 3. That opening yep. scene is brutal when he's a kid cutting out the wings. Yeah. That that was tough to watch. Even like when I see it on replay, if I put it on, that's still hard to watch that part. Yeah. Me. It really is. Uh, Greg put a comment in and said, uh, do you remember the younger Dayspring look that we got when Blue and Yellow returned into his own future and past and his own book when sent forward by Blacksmith? That was an interesting book. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it was. That was the ni- 90s cable. Uh, Dan Who yep. did a live stream earlier today about X-Men 97, I guess more than the, the nine, year 97. And they actually showed some of the little cable comic books too on there. So classic look, but I love this picture of him right here. Wings are spread. The arms are out. He's ready for action. All right. So you want to break down this scene for us here, Josh? I love it. The, she comes in looking for her date and the cable's like, Hey, just, and the way he just pushes her out of the way, he like literally just smacks her like, Hey, get down. I freak, and she like, oh my gosh, she ate. I was like, whoa, easy cable, easy. A little yeah. handsy there. I know, right? He's from the future. I guess they have different rules there. <laughs> I also love how he's how he hides behind the door. Like it's it's yeah. like spycraft. Um, I don't know if yeah. you watch any of uh Secret Invasion or not. I know it's a very divisive topic right now. Yeah. Um, but there's literally a scene at the in the last episode where the one character is like, You forgot to check behind the door, and she was hiding behind the door too. So hey, so. that's that's the best. Uh, spot to hide is behind the door no one ever checks the door it's like when you hide your wallet and you know when you go to the beach you just hide at the tip of the shoes they check the heels and then they move on that's right they don't check the whole shoe <laughs> they nobody don't wants to stick their fingers shoe. in that part it's gross Uh-oh. right <laughs> uh here's the fight we get um i don't know i guess it it's a guy with wings so i guess i shouldn't expect anything crazy but like at least uh cable's got all these cool weapons and grenades and stuff and he's kind of like yeah. flies and punches them I was just kind of like, oh, yep. okay. And knocks him out. Yeah, that's what you're going to do. It's just going like, to, again, he's not going to pop, you know, uh, razor claws out of his fists or anything, I suppose. But yeah. Um, what but what I like, love is right right before he comes in, the, the girl screams and he's like, it's all right. I said it to stun. Like, just letting you know, the audience, all the little kids, like, look, I didn't kill anybody. This is all just set to stun. Exactly. And I'm, sure that that was, I'm sure that the sensors were all over that. It's, that's right. why we don't have real guns. It's all lasers, right? Right, right. Yep. Uh, Nate says creeping cable. <laughs> <laughs> creeping cable. He is creeping, man. He knows how to get around and not be seen for sure. He knows what he's doing. Uh, Four Feather says uh, had slow cook all. Uh, uh, so whenever uh, whenever Lucas is here, he always talking about what we have for dinner that night. <laughs> nice. He's eating, uh, yeah, he said he's eating some Thai food. You guys making me yeah, hungry. Man. There, oh, there it is. There. I missed that comment. Sorry, Lucas. Yeah, yeah. I got some Thai food. I like it. Now. I got some salmon waiting for me after this show for a late dinner. <laughs> Oh, I see. Um, it's almost dinner time for me. So, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, Cable throws like a little grenade up at Angel. Kind of no, not him just out. any grenade, a plasma grenade. Plasma grenade. Hey. Which, oh, which by the way, <laughs> at the end of this episode, there's an amazing moment of that plasma grenade. Grenade we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't wait for that part. And unfortunately, uh, his, his 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 squeeze right here is his main woman makes a bad call and not anymore. Side piece now. Yeah, it's like she's using a side piece. And yeah, she, and I love it again. Look on his face here. He's like, yeah. oh, come on. I know it's only on stun, but I can't get shot again. Yeah, yeah. I freaking love it. It's so funny. This is the look he gets there. And he's about to get blown off. And obviously, he's been outed now as a mutant, which he didn't want to do. Um, and he and she shoots better than he does. And she has her eyes closed. Yeah, exactly. Like, man, she's a. Whew. She's like, I'm not going to try to shoot through the bookcase. I'm just going to shoot right yeah. at the person. Yeah. See if I can hit it. <laughs> so needless to say, I think he's back to being a bachelor. He flies away and, <laughs> and uh she's she's just kind of like, I didn't shoot you because you're a mutant. Please don't say that. Yeah. She's like, I didn't mean to. I, I mean, even though I pulled the trigger, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah, I just irresponsibly shot a gun with my eyes closed. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. All right. So here we jump to Muir Island, and mm. uh I think it's the first time in the series we get to see Moira McTaggart. <laughs> yeah. Moira McTaggart, who nowadays in the comics has a very different uh, level of, of uh, interest going totally. on as opposed to back then. So Xavier uh, peaced out a couple episodes ago. They didn't yeah. know where he was. He just said, I have a very important thing to do, but I can't tell you where it is. Yeah. He's trying to hook up with Moira. <laughs> he is his old flame. So he takes off. 
And this is where we get our, our first interaction uh, with the doctor who supposedly has created uh, the mutant cure. Uh, they Basically, Moira is trying to get him to open up and say hello to Charles. He ain't having it. Yeah. And then, Josh, we get these moments right here, which are great. Awesome. Yep. Yep, yep. The, the uh, first time, like, he tries to see who who's behind there. You know, you get a glimpse of Mystique and then all of a sudden Apocalypse. Yeah. Took me right back to being, like, the, what, like, nine, ten-year-old little prime just standing in front of the TV being all antsy, you know, watching the stuff. Watching him laugh, right? Oh, see, you got that version. I got this version. Oh, nice. That's the select? Yeah. Dang, that's so man. funny. He's just sitting here, so that's why it was funny that we got... And, I, and you know, I've been thinking about picking up that retro... Marvel Legend one. So just it for that look, I want, I love the colors. One of my favorite local toy stores, VR Hobbies, who's having a toy show here uh, in PA next month. Um, they uh, still have some of those in their store and I see them and I've never seen the select other than a toy show, but I see oh, that okay. animated one and I'm like, yeah, oh, it's so cool. Yeah. It's so good looking. Man. And of course we get yeah, Mystique, which Mystique chilling here. So essentially we're told right out of the gate, that Adler is basically mm -hmm. uh, a fake and that, you know, somehow uh, they're all getting swerved. Right. Yeah. Yep. So uh, Xavier wakes up after having like a little mini stroke. <laughs> that screen grab. Looks like he just got a vasectomy or something. <laughs> <laughs> he, hey, he was knocked out for a while. Moira might be. He has an ice pack on his crotch. What's going on? What <laughs> happened? Actually, What'd you do actually, to him, Moira? <laughs> it's actually a bag of frozen peas. They didn't have any, any, any ice packs. Uh, <laughs> They're going to be very strange smelling afterwards. Um, and Mora doesn't look happy. So she's like, mm, <laughs> you're going back to your chair. That the second <laughs> didn't take. Um, so we get a little bit of a back and forth here. Kind of, again, some some social discussion regarding yeah. Charles almost being offended because he's like, no mutant should want to not be a right. mutant. Moira's like, maybe you should give them the option to decide themselves, right? Yeah, they're already arguing like a couple and they're not even a couple. <laughs> exactly. It's those, those two old cranky people later in life who come together. Um, we have this thing on the channel, the, the bony finger of judgment, where anytime we have Xavier or another character like pointing at somebody, and I think I got one in this episode from somebody too, so we'll see. Nice. Yeah, but usually Xavier is giving the bony finger of judgment after he did something dumb all the time. All right, so they have their little discussion, and then we jump back to the mansion, which is still under under uh, construction from when the juggernaut beat it up and destroyed it, basically. So the X-Men are working on that. And there it is. There's the bony finger of judgment. Yeah. <laughs> It's coming from Wolverine. Work. Yeah, he's. I, I love this though because he's just walking around like bossing people around, right? Yep. He's like, "Yo, you need more water in the concrete? Hey, Gambit, pay attention to what I'm doing. I'll show you the right way to do it." Um. Oh, and here we get one of the best quotes of the episode, Josh. So Wolverine walks over. He has the nail. He has the hammer. We know mm -hmm. there's sexual tension with these between these two. And what does he say to her? I'm like, I like to work with my hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very sexually charged, motivated Wolverine right here, I think. Definitely will get you into HR. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I think Jean had a really cool moment here where she kind of like telepathically lifts up the, the nails and shoots them into the board. Yeah. Kind of like want to see her do it to a person, to be honest, after yeah. seeing it on there. <laughs> uh, and then Gambit messing around with Wolverine, tries to blow him up, you know, because it's all just funny games, right? Yeah. Um, and then Which we I, get Jubilee. <laughs> it, right, bef well, right before that, it's so funny because Rogue takes, she's just placing that top like part of the mansion. She had just placed it when the scene start, and they start arguing. So then she brings it back down. I'm like, at this point, you guys are never going to be done building the mansion if you guys keep, like she had literally just placed that on top. So yeah, you, me, you guys that, are going to be homeless till like season Yeah, three. to me, that was funny how she put uh, put it over Gambit. And I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's pretty funny. Yeah. And then we and got then they all go inside. Room. And then they all go inside. It's like, oh, yeah. all right. They just left Gambit in there for a while to hang out. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, so finally we get Jubilee popping in and yep. uh, basically says, hey, the guy we all trust is finally going to tell us where he is after scaring the crap out of us. Yeah. So we get, uh, Xavier properly tells them. And I, I love the emotion in these scenes because you can really see Rogue the minute he says that right where her brain goes, right? Yeah. Um, and then check this. I, I, I love the face here on the bottom right of the screen. Because that dovetails right into her staring yeah. at Scott and Jean Holman's, hands, right? It's like they do it on purpose. Yep, exactly. <laughs> they had that focus. Hey, and they did a great over job. Here. Let's hold hands. Yeah, right. Just rub it into her face again. <laughs> but they, they did a great job here, the animator as well, because they oh, first man. show it zoomed in on Rogue, and then it kind of like comes into the, 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 foregr the foreground, and you see the hands. 
Yeah. Yeah. And Josh, just for anybody watching who isn't, you know, in the know, why is it such a big deal that Rogue is jealous of people who can touch? Because she can't touch anybody. Well, she'll just suck the life energy out of them. Yeah, man. Talk about a killer date, right? Yeah. And she a has major date. sucking power from all <laughs> places. That's that's why Gambit's really trying to make make an hook up with there. her. <laughs> I mean, you know, but it was cool because that type of foreshadowing really, you know, again, the audience was kids, right? Mm -hmm. But when I remember watching this, I, like I wasn't, I was into comics, but not as much. I got more out of this and just kind of laying the foundation of really getting myself into comics. But it helped the like myself and my younger brother really understand like just not not only storytelling, but like the foreshadowing. And it's like, I don't know, just things that they would show Rogue. It's like, well, why is Rogue looking over there? And then they show the hands. It's like, oh, because she can't. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you're a little, if you weren't paying attention, sometimes you're just like, okay, I just want to see action. But then they also had like some type of message behind there. And I thought that was really cool, really advanced for like, look at cartoons nowadays. It's, mm -hmm. it's nothing compared to what X-Men was doing back in the day. Yeah, it worked on so many levels. Yeah, yeah. So many levels. Uh, Forefeather said X-Men cartoon will always have a special place in my heart. Yep. Um, and actually, Josh, you know what? I botched my own show here. I always open up the show by asking, what does X-Men anime series mean to you? And <laughs> it's I too late. I don't want to answer. No, no I'm just playing. <laughs> so what's it mean no, to you? Everything. Like, it. Look, I got the, the, got the shirt on. Uh, yeah, X-Men, that, that was it for me. Like, I, man, be, between growing up on, like, 80s cartoons, which I was just, I think I was just a little too young to really, I just sat there and just like, whatever. Um, but X-Men, man, I, I, that was that was it for me. I really grew up on X-Men. Yeah, it was it was a wonderful show to be watching as a kid. I remember watching it on Saturdays when it was on syndication. I'd run home from the school bus to get home in time to see it at three o'clock. Yep. Um, oh just, yeah. yeah. So thanks for sharing that, man. I should have asked you at the beginning. I, I'll, no, I so, and then the fact that that Toy Biz, you know, was releasing it was it was such a good time to be a kid because you had killer cartoons, but then you had the figures to go along with it. You'd go to Toys, yeah. I would go to Toys R Us, and the pegs would be full of every. You know, you I literally could have. I had the freaking you know wolverine's jeep and you know all his different uh outfits underwater the, the the street civilian one like every tiger stripe everything so it was really cool it was a cool cool time to be a kid i loved the uh the espionage version the spy one yes for mm -hmm. team x that was so yep. cool um so litter insider baseball so every year uh we put up uh, an artificial tree for christmas and mm -hmm. i actually use my old toy biz figures as decorations yep. on the tree nice yeah. That's yeah, cool. it's a little, little geek Christmas tree that the that the girlfriend allows me to do every year, and she she likes doing as well. So uh, Lucas said, "X and animated series was a point of into viewing." I agree. Yeah, <laughs> and I think in regard to to Rogue's power, now that's a superpower. <laughs> hey, that's that's one oh, that's on my wish list. That's too funny. Uh, so again, Storm kind of gets kind of uh, judgy here. She's like, they all get judgy, don't they? Wolf yes. Rain and Storm. They, no, no deserters here. Um, yeah. <laughs> no deserters but, uh, this, here. This was the moment with with, with Storm, where if you think back to the, that X Men third movie, uh, Holly Berry's character Storm is very like in your face. She's like, "Hey, none of us want to do that." And like, I really wonder, like, did she see this episode and use that as like a reference point? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I and I know, like, now that I think about it, and you've mentioned it. It does remind me of that horrible third movie, but. <laughs> Probably, you know, she. I, I could. I could see Halle Berry watching this as her resource material, mm -hmm. channeling her inner storm. Yeah, especially by then, because that was the third one, and so she'd have been in two previous movies. So, you know, she might have seen that early on, and then brought that back later, or something as well. So, um, Scott and Jean showing off again here, uh, the, saying they're cool. worried about Rogue, but yet, meanwhile, Rogue is leaving. <laughs> yep, they're having a quick, hot, and heavy session. Yeah, G Gambit was trying, man. I think he wants to go to Paris with her instead of Muir Island. Yep. Yeah. So he gets thrown out of the car. He like parkours back into the car. Yeah. Uh, and then Rogue's like, screw it. I'll just fly. And then we get this great moment. <laughs> I like what uh, Star Marvel said. Rogue was drawn exceptionally well for back in the day. Yeah. I right? think most of us watched, like, she was, if not the number one reason, at least the number two reason we were watching X Men, the animated oh, yeah. series. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. For sure. They, they they leaned into the screaming scenes sometimes. Man, they way. leaned into a they lot of scenes. I was just yeah. I was glued to my TV. They wanted to give the father something too. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Greg also yeah. said that uh, Rogue uh, also can be a mirror for people and culture is not allowed to touch some people. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah. See yeah, a lot they, of a lot of deep messages. Yeah, this was, this was a cool scene. I loved it. it cracked me uh, up. 
so good. Like probably see, seeing the episode or close to it. Yeah. This poor guy, like everybody's going to think he's nuts. He's going to tell his wife about this. She'll divorce him. He'll live in mm-hmm. an apartment by himself. He won't be yep. able to talk to his kids. All because Rogue was sitting on the side of the plane. The whole airplane mocked him. The, the, the flight attendant mocked him. She even like walked away and laughed. Like She probably got on the phone. She's like, this guy, seat 2B. Yeah. Na- nowadays, there would definitely be an air marshal <laughs> who would be sitting behind him. That yeah. Lucas oh, James. Goodness. Killing me. Uh, Four Feather says Gambit was always trying to get a little sugar, little sugar. from the Rogue. He won. I'm about to use that next next time I go on a date. So my wife, I need a little sugar. <laughs> little sugar mama um lucas said i think the next episode is the one with the great ash out of rogue yep i think so i think you're right is that going to be a new weekly segment the ash Uh-oh. Of the week? <laughs> uh let's see here trying to get some more comments up here uh nate says remy getting uh <laughs> i think he wanted to get cavities i don't think she was letting that sugar go no man not for sure not there's yeah. something on the wing yeah it's like the old twilight zone episode where the yeah. little things out there right Yep. Definitely. Oh, there, he, there it is. I, I swear I didn't see that comment and then it popped up. <laughs> and then what I like is like you have that she's using that book as a reference to see if that's Mirror Island. And it's just like a picture that yep. says Mirror Island. She looks down, she's like, yep, that must be it. <laughs> and it's like this book and she stuffs it in one of her little tiny pouches. Like, yeah. I'm like yeah, wait, she... where'd you put that book at? Where did that book go? <laughs> she's very, very form fitting outfit too. So you see yeah. where it was. Where'd you put that book? <laughs> So I, I do like that. That's one of the favorite parts of the episode. I love how she's kind of like flies into the air to let the plane like fly away too. It's kind of yep. neat. Yeah, that was um, cool. Then we get our our first appearances slash. I, I was calling these cameos from now on. Yeah. to be cameos slash first appearances. Who are these guys, Brian? Pyro and Avalanche. Yep. So they will uh, pop up later on in this season, obviously. Um, and uh, they're chilling at the bar. They're just hanging out, and uh, evidently they're looking for Mystique. And yep. Pyro essentially says, when he sees Rogue walk in, that might be her because she's a shapeshifter. That's how we find out about that. Yep. Yep. So, uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of people trying to be macking it here. Pyro tries to yeah. mack it with Rogue, right? Yeah. He says something along the lines of like, hey, you you here for a hot date? Sets the chair on fire. <laughs> Get it? Because he has fire powers. Yeah. Um, did that strategy work for him, Josh? <laughs> uh, it doesn't look like it unless that he's into other stuff, but. By looking at the picture of him going through the wall, like I don't think that pic- that date went according to his plan. Yeah, yeah, it didn't work out well. Poor Avalanche, he tries to move up on her. He gets chucked out into the ocean. Really, he probably should have died, uh, but he lived. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> fell off the whole cliff. Like, it was crazy. These guys spent more time in the water than actually doing any fighting. I know, right? It, it's a good line coming up where he's like, after I dry off, we'll go steal that guy. <laughs> uh, question in the chat. Is there an avalanche figure? Um, yep. There sure is. is. Josh, what's your thought on that figure? You know, I like uh, one. It's fu- we've had because we do have one. It's the retro Marvel Legend ones. I think it's it's a it could have been great. It's an OK figure because he doesn't come with much like the one before that. The only other one is the Toy Biz one. He comes on a little like rock, you know, vibrating thing. Um, but this one's classic. It's just the, 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 the face. It's just very like stoic. It's just, there's no expression. I wish you would have came with much, either a, a, an extra head sculpt and some, some additional hands. It's, it's just really nothing. That's kind of the, the letdown where I think a lot of us have been really wanting to finish the evil brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and this avalanche, a lot of us have been waiting for it. I, I was one that was waiting for it, but when he came out, I'm just like, mm, you know, I want to wait, get those uh, clearance prices. Yeah, man. Hey, you, you know I'm always playing that long game. Um, yeah, you are. Not to, not to go down too much of a rabbit hole, but that was such a great wave, that retro wave. Spiral, Dark Phoenix, Avalanche, Multiple Man. It was. It was a great mm-hmm. wave. Um, I, I remember being upset that he didn't have an A on his belt for Avalanche, but he doesn't have an A right. on his belt here. So I was like... No. Where did we get the A from? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's... most of the time, like I just like the whole Chode, Chowad yeah, argument how you say his name mm-hmm. like i go by what they did in the animated series yep i think they so, called him chode right yeah it was chode yeah. so, so by that argument i should be not having a problem not having an a on the belt i guess right yeah that's true yeah uh nate said that uh no shame in rogues game oh my goodness josh uh, we got we got a john lithgow reference here the john lithgow version was creepy i'm not quite sure how we got in the lithgow conversation i missed that rabbit hole uh, all right, so they get thrown outside. Rogue is looking for uh, the doctor. Then we get Cable just rolling up on like a Fortnite motorboat, right? Yeah. Love that. Um, and Rogue... it looked like he was 
uh, I was going to say motorboat. And it looked like he was uh, going in the opposite direction. Like he was leaving the island. Mm-hmm. Like he just, they're in the water. And then like they show Cable just like, you know, in the background, just passing by. Yeah. And Avalanche, like, it was a weird moment because like he looks like panicked when he sees Cable for some reason. Yeah. yeah but there's like, no reason. There's no, you know, he's just like, oh, it's, it's, it's a guy in a boat. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe that's his weakness. <laughs> it's, that's his kryptonite. It's, it's going to Guys in boats. Thing. Exactly. So Pyro uh, <laughs> leaves him leaves him hanging. He's being all creepy, yeah. and uh, this is where he hears Rogue talk about why this doctor is important, and essentially decides to kidnap him. Right? Yep. Yep. So that's yeah, kind of Albert Einstein look alike. Yep. And here he is looking like a badass hiding behind the door again. Yeah. Oh, right. Damn. Okay. Behind the door. It's People all about always check behind, behind the door. The door. Maybe that's where yeah. all the GI Joes are in Target behind the door. <laughs> you have to like look behind the door or something. I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, yeah, behind the employee doors. Um, yeah. So Apocalypse, uh, here again, later on, obviously, we know as collectors and comic readers, we know that, spoiler alert, everybody, that Mystique is actually Rogue's mom, right? Yep. So you can almost see her, like, she's almost upset, I think, here. Like, they yeah. try to make it look like she wished that Apocalypse wouldn't have been there for this. Right. Yeah, because yeah, she, she kind of gets startled. And, yeah. and there's that A. There's the A on his belt. There's the A. It's got to rip it off of him and... Take that yeah. mold over a little bit. We'll make it work. Um, but yeah, so I think that was kind of a cool moment because later on when you get that payoff, you go back and rewatch this and it's like, you can see she's somewhat concerned because Rogue doesn't know that that's her mom at this point. Right. She knows, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so they have that whole past with uh, Ms. Marvel and everything, which they get to later on in the series, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's so, really cool. Yeah. So we find out here that Apocalypse basically is trying to more or less make slaves and the machine right. literally will just make slaves, which we know, Josh, is going to give him his four horsemen, right? That's right. Which is awesome. That's the four horsemen mm-hmm. throughout this series are incredible. Whenever they're on, they're on camera on, on, on screen. Um, do you want us to walk us through what's going on here, Josh, with like rogues and random flashback here, the random flashback. She's what well, I, I believe contemplating whether or not she, why she's pursuing to, you know, get rid of her powers. Poor old Cody, you know, yep. The, the her first, yep. her first boyfriend, the first love. And that's when she, realize that hey if she starts touching other people she'll she'll suck the life force out of them yes that's right so she this is like the, the main reason why she wants to get rid of her powers because her one experience kissing yep. somebody resulted in this right uh there it is john Lithga, lithograph said there's something on the wing so i'm sorry that was there we go there's reference <laughs> i think they're back, still yeah, referencing so. the twilight <laughs> twilight zone yeah. we got a great group on here man we love it um Hasbro needs to offer more head sculpts of better expressions for some of the characters yep. for real Styron, for example. Oh, I mean, come on, she should have benefited. A... Yeah, she didn't come with. I mean, yeah. that's like a that's a alley. Uh, come on, alley open, just swinging a miss. You know what she came with? Two hands. Like right here. Two hands. Oh my right god! Right I, I, uh, I gotta bag them up. Yeah, we're the lost. Yeah, I was. That was a tough one. But again, I, I get there's reasons. We won't get into all that stuff tonight. But you know, as far as what they can, how much money they spend on a wave, so on and so forth. So I get it. Uh, Nate says the Twilight Zone movie with. John Lithgow was uh, uh, was ad in general. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So a couple more comments. Oral Cody. Yeah. Lucas James says adopted mother. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was adopted, right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. She raised her and kind of put her in the brotherhood and everything. So here we get another little cool fight going on. Randomly, Pyro decides to pick a fight with the guy with the giant laser gun. That didn't go too well. Yeah. And what Green happened? He has a guess? separate stun. Good thing he has a set for stun. And then Avalanche first was in the water. Now Pyro's in the water. I'm like, yep. these guys, they spend more time. Again, they spend more time in the water than actually <laughs> doing any damage. Um, all right. So since you said that, I was going to say this anyway, but you mentioning the water part. Yeah. They're like the two guys from home alone. The water. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because they're constantly just failing at what they're doing. And then on top yeah. of that, the water thing from the first one, right? Yeah. That's incredible. So yeah, Cable hits him with the stun. Uh, and this is where he's like, he uses his powers to like dry himself off here. Yeah. Which is great. Um, we jump back to Rogue and she's like seconds away from becoming the first four horsemen of Apocalypse here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's about to get uh, transformed. And then much to her chagrin, these two guys roll in and mess the place up. The wet bandits. The show wet up. bandits roll in. I do like that. I like how they show Avalanche's powers here. Yeah. Um, they only showed him like I think busting up a chair up to this point. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I like that for sure. But yeah, these two are just bumbling through. Um, Rogue gets the machine dropped on her. Cable again being sneaky and weird, hiding outside here. Josh. Yeah, 
yep. I'm surprised he wasn't behind the door. <laughs> he might have been if he was inside the house, maybe. Uh, and then here we get this whole from up in here. Josh, and walk us through what happens with Pyro and Avalanche here. Here they think they have, you know, Doctor Adler, um, and then as it's so cool because as, as they're pulling the like the knapsack off of him, you start hearing like her power, and you realize, oh, these guys are gonna see it's Mystique, and then that's when they finally figure out, oh, it's Mystique the whole time, and she kind of like gives them a scolding, like you buffoons, you guys are supposed to help me you know trick i think she said like trick or or somehow uh take take advantage of apocalypse somehow or, or like beat him or something yeah i think i think she was alluding to that she thought they might have a role some kind of role with him or something yeah yeah oh okay w which is weird because again later on they're back to being the brotherhood and everything but uh but yeah well well put sir i explained that so yeah and i love the sound effect they make they hear that you mentioned the shape-shifting effect sound yeah that, that was freaking great. I loved it. Uh, Lucas has put in the chat, this X-Files episode airing today is apropos. The Marvel Legends X-Men 97 figures dropped today. That's right. They did. Hmm. They're up for pre-order today. The uh, the new ones on the retro cards. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, Rogue, we're kind of working toward the end of the episode. And apparently, uh, Josh, Rogue's real mutant power is to throw rocks. Hey, she's a good rock thrower. She throws like two rocks that are very effective in this last part of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she literally threw a little rock and hit the gun at the end. So she's she's like, oh, yeah, like that's right. Car carnival games throwing rocks. She may have pocket. rocks in her pockets. <laughs> as as Dante little, in those say, little pouches. Go kick rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Go kick rocks. She throws them. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. But yeah, she might have those like tucked away with, with that travel book, right, in that little purse. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So Doctor Adler. So right now Mystique's really like morphing back and forth here because. Yeah. She's trying to like convince some people she's still Adler, but some people know she's Mystique. Rogue never finds out that that it's Mystique, yeah. obviously. Um, and Cable, dude, Cable's just like, I'm going to execute you, basically. Yeah, <laughs> he's not effing around, man. Uh, uh, Jean Grey and Cyclops show up. They're like, Hey, we think Rogue's here. Moira and Charles woke up. They heard a loud sound. Um, Rogue messes up Pyro again. <laughs> and where does he go? I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count in the world. <laughs> oh, I was going to say in a bunch of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th this was great. This last yeah. shot here, um, this is really cool. You have Adler, AKA Mystique. And, and now she's got to make a, a decision how she's going to get out of this. Right. Yep. Now, yeah, the but uh, Nate says cable is so aggressive. <laughs> he is. He's ready. <laughs> he's ready to shoot everybody, but it's always set to stun. Yeah. He, he really, uh, He's, he has a lot of emotional baggage. I mean, he was yeah. raised in the past and sent to the future and has a techno virus. <laughs> he's, got, he's gone through a lot in his life, man. He's got a lot of trauma. Yeah, he has a lot of trauma for sure. Um, so one interesting note here to put out there, plot point wise. So the reason Cable's there is because Adler created the mutant power inhibiting collars we saw on Genosha, right? Right. So Mystique earlier on, when, she was, when, when Pyro found out that it was her, makes the comment, he was real. He was a real person until he met Apocalypse. So I'm right, guessing right. that in the canon of the show, he made the callers, sold the callers, and then um, Adler, I guess Apocalypse might go after Adler because of the callers, kills mm -hmm. him, and Mystique takes his place there. Does that sound like it makes sense? I, yeah. <laughs> that's that's, and and that's That was the great thing about the show, too. Like, there was a lot of little, I don't know, breadcrumbs that if, you know... As a kid, like, I think that's why sometimes they had to be so, they had to like spell it out for the kid. Cause if you didn't pick up on that, you were so distracted on Cable's stun gun or <laughs> Rogue's, uh, the way she was drawn. Like, yes. <laughs> you know, so, something like that, it would just really go over your head. And mm -hmm. then when they did the previously on X Men, they would literally spell it all out for you, like, hey, in case you missed it, this yep. is what happened. Remember, this is where we're at. Again, it's, it was so, so ahead of its time for especially for the audience i, I think it felt like it was targeted to us kids at it, that time it, very well put i completely yeah. agree man um it, it's it, again it was it was ahead of its time in a lot of ways yeah really. and I, I think that's why it, it hooked us back in because we were like oh yeah that's right like I, you know most of us were getting out of school we didn't know what was going on yep yep and, and the most amazing thing about it too is this show had such an impact on people around our age that yeah. they're literally making x-men 97 and bringing it back yeah it's it's all coming back it's bananas. Or are, we, are we like cable back in the past? Are we traveling from the future? Like time is relevant. So maybe it, it, it maybe really is. 
It really <laughs> is. At least the time travel didn't hurt my brain too much on this show. We're, we're getting the days of future there past coming up. But <laughs> some, some some show, uh, we talked about the, the movie Looper on the Infinity yeah. Oh, movie. yeah. That still hurts my brain. I try to think, oh, man. think about that. Maybe movie. we're from the future or the way, who was it? Was it Bishop on this? When he's like, for the future. Yes, for the future. Um, yeah. Too good. So here we get uh, another... Uh, What'd you call it earlier? Uh, uh, plasma grenade, I think it was. Oh yeah, plasma grenade. Yep. Yeah, plasma grenade rogue. But here is, and I'll, I'll just say it now. My moment of the episode. I'm just gonna spoil it. Okay. He freaking spits the pin and hits him in the head. <laughs> yeah. Like how how much anger does this guy have? He, Man, like, he what is it? Great... It makes a sound. It makes like a ping sound. And hits him in the head. But at this point, Cable knows that's Mystique, right? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh no, he doesn't. Oh, okay. He still thinks it's Come Adler. On. Okay, so yeah. I was gonna say, I'm like, man, you saw her. Go for a mystique to Adler, and then you're gonna spit up the the the, key, the pin to it. Like, man, talk about. I, I the, love you, that you tossed the other girl, and now you're spitting the pin. Like, man, he's so aggressive, to, and, and just yeah. the sound effect, the ping. I'm just like, yeah. oh, that's hilarious. I Off never noticed dome. that until I rewatched it today. To be honest, <laughs> never noticed it. And here's the moment here, Josh, oh. where he finds out. Now she's screwing with his head, right? She's trying to yeah. like, figure out how to get out of this. That's right. Yeah, so all, all her all her uh, eggs are out of the basket at this point. So she just lets him know that she's not really the guy Cable's looking for. And much to Cable's chagrin, we get a great shot like this. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, man. Love the Blackbird. And this is such a cool moment how it like, literally turns and like faces him. And he just like, grabs his gun. He's like, okay, let's go. Yep. Um, I think this is a cool picture too. Cool animation. You can literally Very see cool. her like mid-transformation yeah. from one to the oh, other. Oh, that's so cool. Man, you grab that. Very good. That's awesome. That, that was luck. Um, <laughs> sometimes I mean, the, the fact that they drew it. Look, you see the skull, you see her boots, and then by the time the blackbird's there, it's like completely done. That's yeah, man. man. That's ooh, take, I think that's, that's, that's just my moment right there. I, I it's it's so quick. It's like a fraction of a second sometimes. That's crazy. It, it, to try to get these, I have to go back like four or five times sometimes and be like real quick on the mouse. But um, yeah, but yeah, I love that image. And then we get again the blackbird squaring up with cable, which is freaking awesome. Um, so freaking cool. Uh, yeah. And then Cyclops shoots, shoots his own son. His Ugh. own son. <laughs> Typical. Look at this, man. What a family. They have their problems. Um, yeah. Case in point, like Cable has baggage, right? Yeah. Yeah. For That's sure, why he's man. throwing women around, spitting uh, pins on their heads. <laughs> hey, thanks, Nate. I appreciate that, man. Uh, nice of you to say. And also, thank you uh, yeah. to, to Lucas as well. Man. Again, it's it, it takes some time, but it's worth it. I'll put it, leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, Cyclops, I guess, is blasting. Was it a rock that Cable like supercharged to explode? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, yeah, or, 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 he, he, shot, he shot it with his gun, right? He shot yes, it with his I think gun, so, like because yeah. sometimes Cable would shoot stuff and it would like charge up to explode, and, like pop or whatever. Uh, so yeah. he gets he gets shot, he falls off the cliff, he grabs the cliff on his way down, so he's okay. But then the rogue has her moment where Gene falls off. And Rogue saves Gene, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is this is like the affirmation that Rogue needs. There was that ongoing discussion throughout the episode of, you know, we should embrace our powers because we can use them to help people. You know, and 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 this is her here helping, saving her one of her best friends because she has those powers. If she yeah. didn't have those powers, her friend would have died, right? Yeah, yeah. But so Pyro and Avalanche survived. Yes. Just. Everybody everybody survived, right? Except Jean. Jean would have been a goner. Yeah. Even though she's a telepath and she's Phoenix, she would have not survived. Exactly. Even <laughs> though even though Avalanche got shot out of the building all the way down into the same area and no, yeah. no sweat, uh Jean yeah. Jean, you know, Jean's fragile. Been That's why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so good save, Rogue. Good save. <laughs> and then here, I mean, the emotion in this in this picture, I mean, says it all, right? You just want to give her a hug. Yeah. You could tell. She, she knows she can have the dream of being able to touch yep. people, but she realizes she can't do it because she has this responsibility to use those same powers, right? No, oh, with great powers. Yeah, man, for sure. So good. So here at the end, he's going to walk us through the last parts of the episode here, Josh. Yeah. So here, she that's when she tells Adler, like, hey, I'm good. Not going to do it after all. And you can sense, like, there's some type of sense of relief from uh, Mystique, a.k.a. Dr. Adler. Yep. Um, and then she takes off and runs into Angel, which is kind of funny. You know, they almost bump into each other and they're like, it's kind of like, hey, watch where you're going. No, watch where you're going. And then he yep. goes and sees uh, Dr. Adler. Yes, he goes to see Adler here. And we find out, which we know from the beginning, because he mentioned that he sent him to Muir Island. He sent them there to yeah. do research. 
Um, well, we find out that Adler, uh, AKA Mystique, he didn't know that Angel was a mutant. Right. Yeah. So, so, and then, so was Angel flying this whole time? Like since the moment he got shot and then midway he changed? Has, has yeah. he been flying the whole time? That's crazy. Because he they, took off in regular clothes and then now uh, he's in his Angel outfit. Yeah. Well, and again, like, I, I, I guess they, they, again, looking at the, the plot of the show, um, they never established to us that he's actually like a superhero. Like, hey, I have a superhero costume too. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was just some rich guy with wings that didn't want yeah. anything to do with that, right? Yeah. So then, to me, I'm like, wait, who is this guy? Like, I remember I was like, wait, what part? What, like, he showed up with that outfit. Like, is he part of a team? Is it like I don't know? I think that they, I think that was like the Easter egg for for I don't know. Because for me, I was like, oh, let me go into the comics, and then I started reading up on him because it was just so quick. They, I think they took like a, such a huge. Uh, story arc in the comics and they just like placed a, a breadcrumb for i don't know us young um, i'm gonna speak for myself but for me it really drove me to go into the comics and like dig up all those all those issues to really read up and that really like i was like oh man that was so awesome and i really learned so much more behind this uh story arc yep same man that was the best part was going back and trying to find what inspired it again if you, if you weren't an avid reader at the time like I just was collecting like random books and X-Men really yeah. made me focus up and go back and like look for the storylines. I always say that uh, I think it's season five when they do the Phalanx Covenant. I love it because I love the Phalanx Covenant when I was a kid, that storyline. So for sure, man. Um, <laughs> and, and of course, Apocalypse is like, I know exactly who he is and he's going to uh -huh. be my horseman of death. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Greg had a question for you, Prime. So yes, yeah, Prime the first question for you. Is there an X-Men character you wish you had been on this show uh, for its run that wasn't on it? Oh, um, Colossus. I would have wanted to see more of Colossus because I know you guys talked to him in the previous episode where, mm -hmm. you know, he helps rebuild and takes on Juggy, but I would have wanted him to be on the show um, only because there's like a really old, uh, like one episode um, where Wolverine has that like crazy Australian accent and they yep. take uh -huh. on... And it's like uh, the Kitty uh, Pride, Pride of the X Men. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Pride of the X Men. That and that I wanted to see that team. So Colossus mm -hmm. and that, like that was really awesome for me. So yeah, I wish Colossus would have been more on here. And, and really, he was criminally underused. Like you look at the characters, Bishop, Cable, uh, yeah. you know, all had major roles in like every season of the show. And yeah. really, I think we got Colossus twice. I think we got him yeah. first season, and then the Omega yeah. Red episode. I think. And yeah. That's oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, we don't get to see him too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Colossus. Yeah, man, it, exactly. But yeah, then that basically we, we end with a maniacal apocalypse laugh, which you know, love me in a maniacal evil oh, apocalypse yeah. laugh. Um, but the cool thing being here, and again, I, I know you've seen the entire series. This episode does a great job of essentially building him early on to be like the ultimate bad guy on this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for sure. you know, sinister. I guess in, in X Men ninety seven is gonna be a main antagonist. But really, the show was supposed to end with that five part beyond good and evil uh, mm. extravaganza they did in the last season, well, second to last season. And, and he was like the main antagonist of the whole series. Like he was just trying to stop time. I think it was. Yeah. So they did a nice job of, of, of really peppering him in here. And then next episode, I believe is enter the apocalypse or something like that, where we get full blown apocalypse trying to like kill everybody sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it really amps up, uh, amps it up from there. So, uh, but that pretty much ties up the episode right there. Wicked episode. Yeah, man, for sure. And one of the best parts about this show are always those cameos and yep. those first appearances. So, um, again, I, I kind of changed this segment of the show to also include those first appearances because, like, by now, like, Apocalypse is, even though he shows up, it's not just a blink and you'll miss cameo. Like, he's part yeah. of the episode, right? Yeah. So, uh, well, I'll, before we get to our favorites and everything here, Josh, out of, out of the first appearances and... Uh, uh, cameos in this episode what was your favorite one like did you dig angel did you dig apocalypse More yeah i want i wanted to say i digged angel just because after that like i was so and it's so funny because there's other characters and superheroes that became my favorite but for the longest time i was like that's what i want wings like as a kid i'm like i just want to have wings like freaking angel and because then i like i said i went back i read the story and i was like well i wouldn't go as far as getting a mechanical but i wanted those like those angel wings just so i can fly around and just mess with people you know punch them <laughs> and do whatever he did in the episode but yeah like for the longest time as a kid i was like oh wings are so cool so yeah awesome, i think that was the, that was the best scene for me 
Yeah, that, that was very cool. So that'll take us right into our favorites, which you're kind of touching on right now. So yep. uh, was was Angel also your favorite character in the whole episode? Uh, no, my favorite character in the episode um, was a, we know it was a tie between uh, Moria, McTaggart, or um, uh, Pyro. Because that was the first time me seeing them, me seeing those, those duo, Pyro and Avalanche. And again, I became a, a big fan of just how, like, there were, they were dummies, but then they were still kind of badass, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that, that's a great selection. I'll, I'll kind of piggyback there. I'll go with Pyro and Avalanche only because we made the analogy that they're like the wet bandits yes. from, uh, the, from from Home Alone. Yeah. Got to gotta, gotta do it. Uh, <laughs> Nate says, <laughs> yes. I want to fly like an like eagle, an eagle. Mm -hmm. like a prime to the sea. Um, yeah, so I'll go with them. How about your favorite quote in the episode? There's My so many favorite quote was from Moria when, when uh, Professor X is asking her about the doctor and she says i only know what he tells me <laughs> like what <laughs> like of course wouldn't anybody just know what like that to me it was so funny he's like do you know if you really can uh reverse me she's like i only know what he tells me i don't i he, i just i just he pays me so i just that was to me that was so hilarious like the way she said that yeah man that that was that was a good one-liner uh again cable said so many cool things this episode yeah. um whether it was when he's walking out saying oh you got a bad memory yeah yeah um, that was don't up call there. Me Garland. Yeah, don't. That was a good. Oh, that was yeah. a great one, dude. I forgot. Don't call yeah. me. That was a good one. Don't call me, darling. Yeah. So I'll go with anything Cable essentially said. <laughs> Set the stun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about your favorite moment in the episode, sir? Uh, I would say the airplane scene, because of the stewardess laughing at the poor guy, flying yeah. back to to his family. The airplane <laughs> scene like killed it for me. It was so <laughs> hilarious. So good. Um, that was my second favorite. I got to go with him spitting the pin from the grenade and, uh, and hitting him yes. in the head. I just, yeah, it was such a little thing to include, but it made him that much more badass that he did it. Yeah. For his character. For sure. Yeah, it was great. So other than that, uh, any final closing thoughts on the episode overall you want to share? Uh, don't trust scientists. Um, don't go to islands and watch out for people from the future. That's, I mean, as a kid, I was like, never going to go to Island, not trust people from the future. And anybody looking like Albert Einstein, not going to trust them. I got a pen and paper around or something. We got to write this down. Hang on. Three things. Those are the three things you want, you want to walk away from. It's like, that's like an episode of the Simpsons, the Halloween episode where uh, Homer goes into the past by accident. Yeah. Yeah. And he's sitting there and he goes, I got to think back to the advice that my dad gave me on my wedding day. <laughs> and his dad's like, if you ever end up in the past, you're not supposed yeah. to be there. Yeah. Oh God. That's so good. Um, yeah. Overall, great episode. I agree. Um, I really liked, again, kind of like the fumbling nature of Pyro and Avalanche. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed watching Rogue have to really question, you know, we talked about earlier in the episode, like why you collect and the different cool questions that you guys inspire on the figure booth. Um, yeah. Very much like with Rogue, like, th why do I do this? Do I want the powers? Do I not want the right. powers? Is it worth the sacrifice, right? Right. So, yeah, de definitely dug it, man. I enjoyed, I don't think there's an episode I don't enjoy, at least maybe the final season, there's some pretty lousy ones, um, which yeah. eventually we'll get to in like five years. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> with that said, sir, uh, I thank you for being on with me. This has been awesome. Thanks um, for having me. If you could. That's awesome. Yeah, yes. dude, anytime, man. Love to have you back again for another one. Um, if you could, can you please tell our audience who's watching, our viewers, uh, what your next project's going to be, anything you're working on right now, and also where they can find you on all your socials? So you guys can find me on IG uh, mostly right now uh, under Prime to the First. Uh, and hopefully in the next month or so, uh, we are wanting to bring back the Figure Booth. That's our podcast with myself and Figure Fan Nate, who's in the chat. Um, we're going to bring it back in September and just end the year strong, do some like a really good topics, bring on some great guests and also additional content. Um, so yeah, just stay tuned for that. And, uh, we'll be making our rounds through everyone else's streams. Hopefully just being a little bit more active. Again, we took a break just to kind of refresh and, uh, rejuvenate, you know, so, uh, enjoying that summer break. And now that summer is almost over, we're ready for the fall season. That's awesome. And what night of the weekend is your show on when it comes back? Um, so tentatively we are shooting for two episodes a month to, to, to kind of get our bearings back. Um, and we drop a, a episode. It will be on Sundays kind of following our old schedule. Um, mm -hmm. but just stay tuned to our page or my page, uh, primer to the first or figure fan underscore Nate. And then we'll drop more details as we get closer. 
to uh, figuring out the scheduling and just kind of our our, our regular routine uh, once we find it. That's awesome. And as we said earlier, your uh, partner in the chat, Figure Fan Nate, follow him as yep. well on Instagram, everybody. That way you'll be up to date on everything going on at the Figure Booth and yeah. all of their different content that is out there. And I have to say one more thing too, everybody go back, listen to the older episodes of the Figure Booth. I, I'm not just saying this. There are some really insightful episodes that really made me think a lot about my collecting, things like that. And something you alluded to, Josh, a moment ago was the idea of essentially being able to take a break from things if it's if you get in burnout or you know whatever it might be and something i gleamed from that from listening to your show with nate was even my own content creation i don't want this to feel like a job right you know it's, yeah. it's meant oh, to be yeah. a hobby meant to be fun so like sometimes as a creator like if you can't stick to a schedule don't make it a job let it be fun right. for you right Oh yeah. And, and for us, like our, you know, we really took a holistic approach and we really wanted to deliver quality versus quantity. So at the end of the day, like I want to be proud of whatever we throw out there. And I want to make sure that whoever decides to listen to us or subscribe or follow, like they're actually enjoying it. They're not like, ah, oh, it's just the same, you know, regurgitated info or the same topic, or they're not even trying anymore. And you can kind of, you can see when someone starts to lose that passion or it's just, kind of difficult to stay engaged and we, we always want to make sure for us that it's coming through as genuine and and our passion is there so from time to time i think all of us collectors we get burnt out whether it's overwhelmed because we're buying too much or we we can't afford what we want or you know the list can go on and on for whatever reasons but sometimes it's good just to put pause on things and just kind of reflect exactly as you guys yeah. always say and in the, in the, one of the one of the best theme songs i've ever heard Relax and get loose. That's right. Relax and That's get loose. That's right. Relax and get loose. Uh, a couple, final, couple, couple of final comments of the night here. Star <laughs> Marvel 76, Primes, Privates. Privates, Nate, yep. What is it? Nate's Nards. Nate's Nards, <laughs> yeah. Which, which group do you do you, do you claim to be your, your home team? Greg said, enjoy what you do. Don't force it or burn out. Completely agree, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree. So with that said, Josh, I guess we're going to get out of here. It's been a great show, man. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks, hey, everyone. Man. Yeah, really appreciate everybody in the chat. Thanks for hanging out. Greatly appreciate that as well. Uh, have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend coming up. So much going on in the toy world right now, coming off of SDCC. Uh, so again, so much stuff out there. So many great shows to watch. You said it earlier. We really are living in a golden era of collecting. And I don't take that for granted, right? That's right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you're new, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Peace. It's free for you. It does not cost you anything. It helps go to the channel tremendously in the March the 5,000 subscribers. I think we're about seven away from 4,500 right now. We're Ooh, getting nice. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, hit that uh, like button. Hit that bell for notification. The YouTube actually notifies you and tells you when we post new content here on the channel, like a weekly toy and reviews and live streams. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like button. And for daily toy content and daily updates, try to check me out over Instagram and Twitter at disavowed underscore 12. Check out Prime as well. Everybody, take care. Stay healthy. I'll be seeing all of you at the pegs. Peace.